My name is Tao Ha, and I am an assistant professor in the Department of Psychology here at ASU. And I study the development of adolescent romantic relationships and peer relationships and parent relationships. Hi, my name is Leah Doan. I am a professor in the Department of Psychology, and I'm also the area head uh, for the developmental area of graduate training. I think one thing that we've identified that does happen is oftentimes parent-time relationships actually get better um, during the collegiate years. And some of this is that you're no longer living together under the same roof, so there's less opportunity for conflict. Um, but also just, I, I think as students mature across their collegiate years, it's really fun to watch um, the parent-child relationship become one that's much more um, bi-directional, right? Um, as opposed to unidirectional. So some dating relationships are continuing, um, they become long distance. Um, that's sometimes challenging for uh, students. And then they will develop new romantic relationships um, when they are in college. And so, and these relationships can take on different forms such as hooking up relationships or actually all the way to like more serious committed relationships. And with friendships, um, again, some friendships will remain, some will change, and then there are new friendships. Often we are focused on all of the practical things that need to happen in the transition to college, where what is your dorm going to be? How are you going to get there? And all of the practical things, and we forget about all the emotional changes that are happening at the same time. So relationships, and this can be family relationships, this can be romantic relationships, um, or our friends, right? They can be incredible support systems, right? And as well as huge sources of motivation. So, you know, I think lots of students talk about um, having great motivation um, to want to give back to their family. So hanging out with the wrong friends. So what are wrong friends? You go out and you drink a lot and you spend most of your time um, not studying. And so that is a, um, an example of how friendships are actually not benefiting academics. Relationships can also be forms of stress. <laughs> and so um, what's really important to acknowledge is that relationships that, you know, um, are particularly demanding or um, conflict-ridden um, can affect student achievement in the classroom. And so um, thinking about the conflicts or demands you might be placing on your student or that the student is experiencing with a romantic partner um, or with a friend and helping them find resources to help them resolve those so that it doesn't affect um, their academics. Because this is, you know, relationships really can affect our emotions and our ability to concentrate and focus in. And so knowing the questions to ask to make sure that the relationships are healthy and promoting the student's well-being, whether it's you know a parent's personal relationship with the child or a relationship they're hearing about that their child has with others on campus, I think it's important to keep those lines of communication open and acknowledge when something needs to change and not being afraid to say something. I actually think as a parent, um, even though your relationship with your child is changing, um, you're still a main source for, of support for them. And so I think um, a lot of the work that has already been done, <laughs> right, is actually benefiting your, your, your student, your child now when they're in college. And I think it's really important to um, listen and um, be non-judgmental, be as non-judgmental as you can and listening and kind of just, you know, asking what can I do for you? Those are all very helpful techniques um, to, um, to support your child. So I think for parents, it's actually having a conversation about the change that likely will happen um, to hear the student's perspective on it, um, which sounds weird and uncomfortable sometimes. But I think having a, a dialogue about um, an anticipation of how the relationship might change and what the child wants from the relationship and what you as a parent want from the relationship is really important. But I think it's important to not get over involved um, when it's not necessary. Another uh, scenario that a lot of, um, you know, um, students at ASU in particular have is, is they, they are like a first generation stu a student and their parents actually don't know anything about what's going on in college because they haven't been to, the coll to college themselves, they don't speak the language. Well, just realize you're still really, really important in the life of your child. Um, they know that you're proud and I think it's really important to kind of communicate that 
And, and I think the same is true for um, students who are coming from abroad. Digital uh, connections are essential. Um, and But I also think that that is just, um, you know, even though parents are in a total different part of the world, they're still impacting their child's development and academic engagement. I see a lot of students in my classes and um, I really enjoy teaching and I really enjoy hearing my students' stories. And so realize that um, within your studies, your professors are your biggest advocates as well. And so you can talk to them. It's really good to realize that either like the teaching assistant, is there, if, if there is one, or the professor can really be a big resource. And otherwise they can refer you to um, um, different opportunities or resources. So ASU has a lot of resources. So as students are facing some of these challenges and challenges in relationships, this can be a lot emotionally for them, but also emotionally for the parents. So things like health services and counseling services is a great place to start. Um, and oftentimes it might even just take one or two sessions to just be able to verbalize the anxiety and come up with um, strategies of how to deal with um, those particular emotions that they're having. Um, so whether that's joining a new club or finding others who have other common interests there are so many clubs at ASU um, and I feel like it's such a broad community that students likely will be able to find like-minded others um, to be able to build new relationships if others come to an end.